This is going to be a much shorter video than the last one. Uh, I don't think I'll get through the whole rest of the problem set, but here we go. Uh, just a real quick recap. Here's the real crucial properties of the wedge product of the D, especially as uh, regards the wedge product. That's the product rule that we did. Um, we've now really proved that D squared is zero all the time. Um, we've proved the Leibniz or product rule, the definition of D for a function, basically emulating the gradient, and just plain old linearity. And these ones are really have pride of place in terms of uh, you can derive everything else you'd want to know about D from those four, and they're completely general. Um, let me remind you of some notation about how to relate this back to ordinary like Divgrad curl in R3 for vector fields. We say if F is a vector field, the tilde of it is the one form version of F. And if F is a vector field, the star of it is the a two form version, where we put in like Q. We put it with the other two, and it's in cyclic order. We think of this as having a y in it, y, z, x is cyclic order. And this is what we came up with um, last a couple videos ago, a more explicit kind of formula version of saying that d, uh, what I say here, the d implements all of grad curl and div depending on whether it's acting on zero forms, uh, one forms, or two forms, respectively. Um, and so this tilde and star notation is going to be how, and dv is a nice little abbreviation for dx, d, wedge dy, wedge dc. These three are going to be how we translate things very carefully back and forth. So let's, uh, let's look at this. And before we use those calculus cor correspondences, I want to note some algebra correspondences um, that have to do with the tilde and the star. If we take two vector fields, f and g, we turn them into one forms, and then we wedge them, it turns out to be, it's definitely going to be a two form. So it's going to be star of some vector field. And you might be able to guess what vector field based out of f and g this is going to be. And then f tilde wedge g star, that's a one form wedge a two form. That's going to be some three form, which has to be a function times dv, dx, dy, dz. And it turns out this is a natural operation on the vector fields f and g as well. So you might want to pause the video and work those out just by plugging in explicitly uh, f is pi plus qj plus rk. Let's put in, in addition to that, we're going to need a good name for g, the components of g. Let's say g is, uh, let's say, ai oops, plus bj plus ck. Okay, So you might want to just work this out. Now I'm going to do it uh, for you. Uh, let's just go ahead and get run with this. Okay, that's going to be p dx plus q dy plus r dz all wedge. Same deal. Let's copy and paste that with the a, b, and c. And the, the hint here, even before we do it, is we know that the wedge of one forms uh, is anti-symmetric. And so particularly, like, the PA is going to die. And then we're going to get some minus signs. That pretty much tells you what this is going to be. Um, let's see. So this is going to be PA is not going to happen. PB, that's going to be a DX wedge DY. And then I'm also going to, I shouldn't really copy and paste this. It just looks. It's going to be confusing. I'm just do it from scratch. OK, so I'm going to get a PB DX wedge DY. And then I'm going to get something else, DY wedge DX. It's going to be a QA DY wedge DX. Well, in other words, it's going to be minus QA DX wedge DY. Plus, uh, what about a DY wedge DZ? Keep it in cyclic order. DY wedge DZ is going to be QC. And then I get a. Um, a z dz wedge dy from r b minus r b, and that's dy wedge dz plus, and then oops, and then what else do I have? Um, there's going to be a dz wedge dx. Okay, and I probably should have done these in the, in a different order actually. Um, let's put this here plus, and then this should be last. Just forgetting my good order here. OK. Because remember, we want it to end up being star of something. Then this show, this is going to be the first lot of the star. This is going to be the second. 
the y slot, this is going to be the z slot. Okay, in dz wedge dx, we're going to get ra minus what comes from dx wedge dz, uh, pc. Okay, so that is the star of all this stuff. Where now to undo the star, I just put, this is going to be the basis vector i. And then this is going to be j. Let me copy the i and turn it to into a j. And this is going to be k. And it's not too hard to recognize that that's the, that's the cross product of f and g and then in a star. So without, without worrying too much, where's the cross? There it is. Without worrying too much about the exact notation with tildes and stars, it's just saying that the wedge product of one forms corresponds to the cross product of vector fields, but with an important caveat that the wedge product of one forms becomes something different, becomes a two form. And so the cross product is kind of fake. And this is why it only works in R3. The cross product really is creating something that's different from a vector field and then kind of shoehorning it into the category of vector field. And the forms are telling us that there's something deeper going on. Okay, so that is what fills in the blank here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to continue with a uh, well, no, let's, let's finish this one up, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop this video and continue later. So what about this one? F tilde wedge G star. Okay. Well, that's going to be, ooh, let's see. Here's F tilde. Okay. And then wedge G star. Well, G star is going to be like this, but I'm going to have to change it to A's, B's, and C's. And now this, as usual, when you get to having m a lot of wedges together, it actually starts to simplify. When you get up to close to the dimension of the space you're in, and here we're in R3, um, a lot of things die. And the only things that don't die here are PA and QB plus QB plus RC, and that's all times DX, wedge DY, wedge DZ. And look what happens. It all comes out in cyclic order. And that's just dv. That's my new abbreviation for dx, dy, dz. dy, dz, dx is in cyclic order. dz, dx, dy. It all works out wonderfully. And so what we get, hey, that's the dot product. That's awesome. This wedge product, even though it tends to be anti-commutative, when we kind of do this weird thing of taking a one-form version of one vector field and the two-form version of the other, we actually get f dot g. Uh, times dv, the three-form version of a function. So that's interesting. Usually we think of this as two vector fields producing a scalar. Now we're thinking of it as a one-form and a two-form producing a three-form, which does have the same information content as just a function, because any, any three-form is just a function times dx, dy, dz.